Good evening, everyone. We'll be getting started in just a minute. For those of you that jumped onto the stream, thank you for taking the time out of your evening. I trust that everyone has had a fantastic, positive day today. I've been feeling a little under the weather these last couple of days. Uh, I didn't even feel too well yesterday when I did the stream, to be honest with you. Uh, this change of weather and these, this change of temperature uh, tends to take a toll on you <laughs> if you're not careful. So I trust that everyone has uh, had a positive day today and a good day today. Um, we're going to be getting right into it. Uh, you see, you see the day's tonight's uh, topic: Shankarla Robinson and the frenemies around her. I will tell you, um, you have no idea how important it is for you to understand the individuals that you have around you. It's very important, very, very important. You would be surprised how many people that you believe are your friends. And in fact, they've been plotting, praying, <laughs> they've been existing for your demise or for your failure. While they feigned friendship, smiling in your face. There was an old song that came out years ago. They smile in your face all the time. They want to take your place. The backstabbers. I'm pretty sure some of y'all remember that song. Uh, you know, what's funny about that song is that when we listened to it, we didn't even realize what exactly it was saying. Because we had backstabbers around us even when the song came out. And we, didn't, we couldn't identify that the same people that were singing the song along with us. <laughs> in fact, the title of the song identified them what made them blend in so easily is that they knew that you couldn't identify them see the funny thing about individuals who fake friendship many of them have become so masterful so advanced so strategic in how they can disguise themselves in terms of how they act and in terms of how they talk in terms of how they behave around you and your family members i mean they got it down to a science they know exactly how to win the affection of others while inside internally within themselves there is nothing genuine about them this is a dangerous individual i will tell you uh, this is a very dangerous individual. You have to be very careful who you bestow the honored title of friendship upon. So we're going to get into it tonight. We're going to talk about uh, some of the frenemies. <laughs> Not friends. Uh, we can see that she had no friends. Shanquilla Robinson had no friends around her that night. But it was beyond her comprehension or ability to even recognize them. She believed that they were her friend. I talked about myself uh, yesterday in a stream. And I talked about how when I was a young man coming up. How I had this attitude, this behavior that made me want to make everybody my friend. It's almost like I couldn't breathe right. Unless... I had individuals that liked and admired me. And I'll tell you something, it's, it's so many of us, not just as young teenagers, but even as adults, we suffer from this, uh, from this thing where we find ourselves insecure. Unless we can make others give us validation. Even if we're in pursuit of being successful, because one thing about becoming successful and you find yourselves in pursuit with any goal that you have, as you become more and more and more successful in your pursuits, 
it gets lonelier and lonelier and lonelier. And then there's a thing called success guilt that so many uh, people suffer from as they become successful. Now you say, well, what is success guilt? Well, success guilt is that you know you at some point were on the same level as the individuals that you deemed as your friend. And you find out very quickly that your ambitions, your work ethic, and your drive to become successful, you find out very quickly that the individuals around you who you perhaps grew up with, played with, went to middle school, elementary school, even college with, you find that they lack the same work ethic, they lack the same ambition, and they lack the same drive that you perhaps may have. And as you become successful more and more, you, you know subconsciously that they cannot go. You know it. But there's a guilt that you carry where you feel you have to take them along with you. There was a, a singer years ago, some of you that are very young in your 20s or you may not know mm -hmm. the individual I'm gonna talk about. This is a, a singer, an entertainer. His name was MC Hammer. MC Hammer came out of South Central Los Angeles. He grew up like any other young African American in South Central Los Angeles, in the same toxic environments. But he had ambition, he had a goal, he had dreams, and he became one of the most successful entertainers of that time. What did he do? Again, success guilt. He felt he had to take everybody even those who lacked the same work ethic, even those who lacked the same ambition, those who lacked the same drive, had no damn goals, no success was written on a sheet in front of them that they could look at every single day. No, no goals at all, no plan. But his success guilt caused him to bring all of these individuals along with him and I mean he brought many of them by the hundreds to the point he financed their income out of his success and which ultimately led amongst other things to his downfall after he fell and lost his success all of those individuals that he brought along with him you couldn't find one you couldn't find one that was there to console him you know uh this reminds me and this is not a religious channel but for those of you that know religion there's a story in scripture where it talks about job job was considered one of the richest men in the land but when his house was struck on all four corners and he lost all of his children and then in turn he became stricken with the disease he lost all of his wealth all of those individuals that were around job they fell away from him and they wanted nothing to do with him to the point that even his own wife, while he still believed in God, she said, why don't you just curse God and die? And what did he do? He turned around and said, you speak as a foolish woman. Why is that story important? Because everything in life speaks to your uh, conduct it also speaks to those that you surround yourself around it could either be your demise 
or they could be assets in your circle that lead to your success. But you must be able to identify genuine friends, genuine associates, because you have both. You have to learn how to identify who are friends and in fact, who are associates. Now, having associates is not necessarily a bad thing. You just have to be able to identify who are the uh, mm -hmm. reliable associates, those that represent assets towards the goals, towards the ambitions that you may have. And this is male or female. Yo, yes, your associates can be also assets. But your friends, this is a title that can only be bestowed upon a very special individual. No, not everybody can get the title of friend, you know? Greater love hath no man that he lay his life down for his friend. That is the difference and the seriousness of that term, friend. That's why you can't put it on everybody. Everybody doesn't deserve it. And in our in our immaturity of what the definition of friendship means, we tend to call individuals our friend because of what they may have done for us, what they may have bought us, how nice they are to our parents, how pleasant they may have been to our child the job that they gave us a reference for. So many things that are cosmetic that we give an individual the high honor of being called a friend only to find yourself betrayed because you didn't understand the real definition of what true friendship is. And I want to say to you, uh, young ladies, and the reason why I'm going to direct it to young women or women in general is because this particular case with Shanquella Robinson, may God rest her soul and may God give peace to her mother, Ms. Shahandra Robinson and her father, Mr. Bernard Robinson and her younger sister, Quilla. May they get peace. But when you look at the events, the tragic events of what happened with Mrs. Uh, Shanquilla Robinson, it's clear and it's very clear that we don't truly understand the definition of friendship. We really don't understand the definition of friendship because we have been taught in this current society that friendship is defined by what people do for you. A man could cross an old woman at the corner. He could run up on her and he could walk her across the street. Everybody watching may say, oh, what a gentleman, what a nice guy. What humanity he is uh, displaying by helping this old woman get across the street only to see him rob her, snatch her pocketbook after she gets on the other side. Do you understand? An individual that's a frenemy, disguised as a friend, they wear a costume and they wear it 24 hours a day. You get so used to seeing that costume that you believe that what you're seeing is the real person. Huh, no. Nah. Only to find out to your hurt, to your dismay, that this individual has been a chameleon in front of you the whole time. Unfortunately, our sister found out too late, too late. I can only imagine what was going on in her mind when the individual who she thought was her friend was aggressing her physically and I'm sure she could see in her eyes that she meant no good intentions 
I know many of you have gotten into confrontations like I have growing up. You know when you're face to face with an individual and you're about to fight. There's a certain look in their eyes that you can see and you know that they have no good intentions for you. Every swing is swung with bad intentions. I can only imagine what her mind was thinking and feeling knowing that she financed an entire trip only to find herself in the presence of frenemies who are all around her, all around her. I wanna share my screen and just briefly go over some definitions. Friend, the thing you don't have. I've got no friends, that's what it says here. Let's talk about this, let's read this definition here. And this comes from uh, an article on, on uh, that I found on internet in terms of a, defining the word. I looked at several, but this one kind of stuck. It says a friend is someone you love and who loves you. Someone you respect and who respects you. Now let's look at the word respect. Anytime you put re in front of any word, it means to look or to do again. Spect comes from the Greek word, which means to look or see, spect. That's why when you have glasses, they say, uh, get your spectacles. When you re, put R-E in front of anything, you're saying to look again, to do again. So respect means to re-look again at an individual, respect. Pay attention to the things you should look at in an individual. It says someone you respect and who respects you. Someone whom you trust and who trusts you. A friend is honest and makes you want to be honest too. A friend is loyal. A friend is someone who is happy to spend time with you, doing absolutely nothing at all. Someone who doesn't mind driving you on stupid errands. <laughs> who will get up at midnight just because you want to go on an adventure. And who doesn't have to talk to communicate with you. A friend is someone who does not only care if you're ugly or boring, but doesn't even think about it. Someone who forgives you no matter what you do. And someone who tries to help you even when they don't know how. A friend is someone who tells you if you're being stupid. Oh yeah, that's a real friend, I believe, and I've said that for years. A friend will run the risk of losing your friendship to tell you the truth. That's a real friend. Not many of us have them. But who doesn't make you feel stupid in the process? A friend is someone who would sacrifice their life and happiness for you. A friend is someone who come with you when you have to do boring things like watch bad recitals, go to stuffy parties or wait in boring lobbies. You don't even think about who's talking or who's listening in a conversation with a friend. A friend is someone for whom you're willing to change your opinions. A friend is someone you look forward to seeing and who looks forward to seeing you. Someone you like so much, it doesn't matter if you share interests or traits. A friend is someone you like so much, you start to like the things they like. A friend is a partner not a leader or a follower. <laughs> How many of us can say we have an individual in our life that's described like this? I don't believe anyone around Shanquilla Robinson um, identifies with this definition at all. 
not even close. A frenemy, which so many have. A combination of two words, friend and enemy. First thing on the list, what does a frenemy do? They ghost you when they can't discourage you from your goals and from mm -hmm. your ambition. They never apologize and they never make amends for when they're wrong, ever. They're passive aggressive, very indirect, never coming straight. And then they use a tactic called the silent treatment. Oh yeah, that silent treatment is supposed to, is designed to see how much emotional control they have over you. So when they do the silent treatment, they get you to asking them over and over, what's wrong with you? What's the matter? Did I do something wrong? When they know you're, when they, when you start doing that, it validates them that they have control over you in some respect. Passive aggressive behavior. They talk bad about your friends other than themselves. <laughs> that means if you have other friends outside of them, they tend to talk bad about those friends. This kind of behavior that I'm describing is more prevalent amongst women. And that's the truth. And I know many of you ladies that hear this stream, you know I'm correct. You have those same individuals around you right now. They talk bad about your friends other than themselves. They encourage unhealthy behavior. They know that you don't drink, not in large amounts, no. But they'll tell you if you're ambitious and if your uh, your work ethic is high. They'll say, girl, you need to let your hair down, live a little, enjoy your life. Come on, man, take this shot. Take this second shot, take this third shot, take this fourth shot. They'll get you to do things in excess that you were not willing or would not have done outside of their company. And then when they find you uncontrolled by what they encourage you to do, then they'll videotape it and make mockery of it and use it against you at a later date. Huh, I know I'm talking to somebody because I'm sure it has happened to you. We're talking about frenemies. They make you doubt yourself. If you have goals, if you have ambition, if there's something that you are driven, that you want to do, that's bigger than the environment that you currently live in, they'll do things and say things to cause you to doubt yourself and doubt your goals. What is the objective? The objective is to pull you off out of focus so that you can stay at the level that they are because they're undriven. They are goalless. They have no work ethic. They want to keep you where they are. These are your frenemies. Hope I'm helping somebody. They covet your life, meaning they want what you have and they want shortcuts. Forget the work ethic. Forget what you had to do. Forget the hours. Forget the planning, the hours of planning, the prayer, and everything else that you incorporated to find yourself in a position of success. Oh, no. They don't want to do any of that. No, they want to find the shortcut to how you're becoming successful. What else is a frenemy? They're users. They don't give. They simply take. They lack genuine reciprocity. There is no reciprocation of anything. They take, take, take. And we can see that that's exactly what happened with Shanquilla Robinson and the Cabo Six. Yeah, we're talking about the frenemies that were around her. While she paid for the entire trip. These individuals are out of her league, completely out of her league completely out of her league and I don't believe not one of them were qualified to do financially what she felt uh, in her heart to do for all five of them all six of them now I don't think they would have came out of their pocket and done any of that not at all these were bums frenemies that's what they were here's another thing a frenemy will do 
They tell your secrets. You know, when you think you have a friend, you share your intimate secrets, good or bad, positive or negative, successes and failures. Why? Because you believe that you're depositing that information into a vault that will never be opened to anyone. Ah, but this is what a frenemy does. They take that information, they use it against you at the most inconvenient time. That's to change the thought process, the idea, the admiration of those that see you becoming successful and begin to look at you differently in the negative way. So they'll expose your deepest, darkest secrets that you shared with them in confidence. What else do they do? The frenemies. They're emotionally at all times inconsistent. They admire you one minute, then they despise you the next. Kind one minute, resentful the next. A frenemy hates your success and feels that their very survival is rooted in your failure and or demise. That's why it's important to understand that none of these individuals cared about her being dead, no. No, 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 no. That's not what their biggest issue was. If that was their biggest issue, or if they had an ounce of concern, they would have never left her in that building, in that villa, alone, while they took their sorry asses to an airport, booked a hotel at the airport, awaiting their flight to depart out of Mexico. Who would do that? If they cared, if they truly cared about the egregious events that had taken place at that villa at their hands, they would have never done that. So see, they didn't care about her losing her life. What they were more concerned about, and I believe even today, they are still most concerned about not the loss that Mrs. Shahandra Robinson feels right now by losing her daughter, no. They don't give a damn about that. They don't care about the loss that Mr. Bernard Robinson feels at losing his only daughter, no. They don't give a damn about that. And they don't care about her younger sister, Quilla, who's grieving as well. They can't even grieve in peace because of so much attention that's given to this case. Not to mention, another content creator, Angry Man mentioned, and I never gave it much thought, but he said, they have to live with the fact that this video will be on the internet forever, forever. They will have to at some point, even after grieving, which grieving for your own child never goes away, but that sore, that scab, will continue to be peeled off of, the, off of them every time this video surfaces, and it will surface for the rest of their lives because we understand that what goes on the internet stays on the internet forever. Forever. This is what they have to deal with. And again, like every stream, uh, my condolences goes out to Miss Shahandra Robinson and Mr. Bernard Robinson and Quilla, her younger sister, for your loss. Uh, I did in a stream yesterday, I announced that there were new updates as it relates to Miss Dejanay Jackson. This is the individual posing in, posing in costume as a friend a so-called friend. This is the individual that was seen in the video fighting uh, Shanquella so viciously. It is alleged that she is in custody right now as we speak and in processing. From what I looked at and researched today, it's a, it's a lengthy process. It's a lot of paperwork, a lot of paperwork that's involved and upon completing that necessary paperwork, 
from what I understand is when it all will be announced to the general public. So for right now, there's some skepticisms about whether she's actually been arrested or not. But the investigative journalist, Mr. Gerardo Zaniga, he's a very credible source. He's been an investigative reporter for not just issues in Mexico, but he's also been an investigative reporter for major uh, mainstream platforms here in the United mm -hmm. States, CBS, NBC. So he's not some fly-by-night individual that's just running his mouth, making himself known publicly by getting on the internet just to be up there throwing out lies. This man has worked closely with a lot of individuals that are close to the family. I don't believe he's as reckless as the individuals that are accused of this crime. I don't believe that. I, I actually trust what he's saying. And I believe all of us simply have to exercise a little patience and let the process do what it does. And then it all will be revealed to the general public. But do I believe she's in custody? Yes, I do. Am I excited about it? Yes, I am. I'll be more excited to see the other five get convicted as well. Especially the weirdo, Nazir Wiggins, who said he laid next to the body and played Summer Walker and rubbed her hair. What kind of pervert are you? <laughs> when you said in your own mouth, out of your own mouth that she was unresponsive. What kind of pervert are you, uh, Mr. Nazir Wiggins? How weird is that, you pervert? Let's continue. We're gonna talk about what is the definition of enemy. Enemy, a person who feels hatred for fosters harmful designs against or engages in antagonistic activities against another, an adversary or opponent. <laughs> we can see a few of those descriptions that were displayed with Cabo 6. Let's look at what frenemy is. Frenemy, informal, a person who is or pretends to be a friend, but who is also in some ways an enemy or rival. Well, we certainly know that's true. We certainly know that's true. Oh, that's true for sure. That's true for sure. And uh, folks, what I want to say is... I really want to say to so many of you ladies, because here's what I'm finding. One thing I found amongst women, in my observation, women, when they're not doing well, it seems you will support one another in dysfunction. You will cheer each other on in dysfunction. You will defend one another in dysfunction. You will finance one another in dysfunction. You will hide one another's faults in dysfunction. It's only when one of you or two or more of you begin to break outside of that mold to do something different that that same circle disguised as sister code you turn against the individuals that are leaving that circle so what are you saying uh charles you think you're saying that doesn't exist amongst men oh you absolutely <laughs> you better believe it oh it exists among us just not at the same rate that it exists among you. Women are active in that area where one another is concerned, especially if a male 
is is involved within that circle because to get a good male a good man the competition is so stiff you haven't seen a fight until you see the competition and the rivalry where another man is concerned where women are concerned oh man that's a cat fight that you've never seen before now added into other areas of life where success is concerned Dejanae Jackson she worked in the healthcare industry I believe she was a certified nurse's assistant but she was aspiring to become a nurse well she can cancel that goal Elise Hyatt which is one of the silent quiet ones that we don't hear much from she was also a certified nurse's assistant. But Shanquella was an entrepreneur and she was successful. Not that there's anything wrong with a certified nurse's assistant. Absolutely not. It's an honorable job. But when you compare employment versus entrepreneurship, where you have control over how much money you make, based on your work ethic, how successful you become based on your work ethic. And as with a job, you're kind of stuck in what they feel you're qualified for. And then you see a friend of yours who's an entrepreneur striving, growing, and becoming extremely successful. If you're not a true friend, you become envious. You become jealous. You start making it a mission in your life to discourage, to derail this individual from becoming more successful than you. Because what do you see? What does the individual that is jealous and envious tend to see? in a person who they called their friend when they were on the same level. Huh. They see that their friend is going to leave them. This is the problem. See, the sick, immature thinking of the individual that's like that, they actually believe that the person is leaving them. You know that's a sickness. Because if you're my true friend and there's mutual love one to the other as true friends, my success feels to you like it's yours. If I'm your true friend and I'm becoming successful and I know you're a true friend to me by definition, I'm not going to leave you. In fact, a true friend is encouraged by you. It's only the frenemy that becomes a problem for you when they find out you want to do something more than what they're aspiring to do. That's why you heard me say in my stream yesterday, you can't take everybody with you. And I would suggest to every sister, every young sister, Every woman, every man, every young brother, I would suggest to you, stop thinking you have to take everybody with you. You can't take everybody with you. Success is a lonely place. Why is it called a lonely place? Because there's not many people there with you that have your intentions good at heart. It's a lonely place when you become successful or when you're aspiring to become successful because you start you start finding the dead leaves falling off of you and new leaves begin to grow but they grow so slowly that you feel a sense of loneliness and abandonment because people are starting to look at you weird the same ones that loved you liked you <clears throat> that you thought admired you are the same ones now talking about you behind your back because they see you succeeding and when they get around you they keep that mask up 
and they smile in your face and they pretend to be encouraging you in your success while silently in the back of their head, they're praying for your demise. They're praying for your failure. This is what tonight's stream is all about. It's Shanquilla Robinson and the frenemies around her. So dangerous are these individuals. So dangerous are these individuals. so dangerous I suggest and I would encourage everyone that sees this stream go back and watch it again I would encourage to share this stream too many so many probably within your own circle or perhaps <clears throat> even you may be victim to what I discussed in this stream tonight. You may know other individuals who may be uh, potentially victims of what I discussed in this stream tonight. I suggest you subscribe and share this stream. I believe it's of, of uh, great importance because we don't wanna embark ourselves upon another story like this again. But if we don't, understand this very critical principle and understand the distinct difference between a friend a true friend and a friend of me we will embark upon a story like this again if not worse and perhaps it may be you perhaps it may be your daughter perhaps it may be your son perhaps it may be an individual that you care about. I suggest review this stream again and share it. I thank all of you for getting on the stream tonight. I'm going to give some shout outs to those that uh, got on the stream tonight. Shout out to Margaret Burns. Love you. Let's see who else got on tonight. Shout out to Sheila Johnson. <laughs> uh, congratulations to you. She she writes, I'm that woman, certified nurse assistant. Congratulations to you. <laughs> yeah, crabs in a basket, uh, in a barrel, Sheila. That's a fact. Shout out to Abdul. Thanks for getting on the stream. And shout out to, well, let's see who we got here. Shout out to Frederick Johnson. Shout out my brother. Thank you for getting on the stream tonight. And shout out to all of you that get on the stream after this stream is completed. Um, I, I, I'll tell you this. Um, I'm not gonna stop talking about this uh, subject until I see complete justice. Even if in fact, we find that it's authentic, and I believe it is, that uh, Mrs. Dejanay Jackson is in fact in custody and is awaiting extradition back to the country she loves so well, <laughs> Mexico. If that we find that that is a fact, which I believe in my gut that it is, I'm still not satisfied until I see the other five convicted for the part that they played in causing this young, ambitious, beautiful young sister to lose her life in the midst of those that she should have been able to trust, in the midst of those that she fell asleep on a hammock not believing that she was in any, in any danger whatsoever in the company of these individuals not really that realizing that her life hung in the balance i won't be satisfied until i see every single one of them behind bars again i'll stress and i'll keep stressing i don't mean behind bars in the united states but i mean behind bars in a mexican dusty prison in the country where the crime was committed. 
I'm going to say as I close, be aware of those in your circle. Because if you don't, your circle will hurt you or even potentially take your life. Shanquilla Robinson and the frenemies around her. Justice for Shanquilla Robinson. And again, my condolences to the parents who are suffering the loss of their daughter and a sister who's suffering the loss of her sister. Thank you for getting on the stream tonight, folks. I appreciate you. This, this is another stream of Let's Talk About It. And I am your host, Charles Chambers. With that being said, have a good night and have a positive and productive day tomorrow.